Hello everyone, my name is Joshua Wapula. I'm a lecturer at Regional Curriculum Management College, the Regional College. I handle financial management, advanced financial management, and taxation, both at a lower level and upper level, that is the advanced and the taxation of section two. Welcome to our channel. You can subscribe and follow us on social media platforms. Now today we are supposed to cover something that is very much fundamental for those who are doing financial management and advanced financial management, a topic called investment decisions. And uh, I'll be able to handle the question that was tested in May 2021 Question number 1B, May 2021, question 1B, May 2021, question 1B, and the question says that uh, you have been appointed by, uh, by Biosoft Limited to review three investment project proposals, the investment funds are limited to 8 million, so you have the limited funds the limited amount is shillings eight million. Uh -huh. Details of this po of three possible investment projects, none of which can be delayed, are given below. We have the first project, an investment of three million in workstation assessments. Each assessment would be on an individual employee basis and would lead to a saving in labor costs from increased efficiency and reduced absenteeism in money terms the savings in labor costs are expected to be. We have cash flows from year one to year five there. Uh -huh. Project two, an investment of 4.5 million in individual workstations for staff that is expected to reduce administration costs of 14.08 per annum in money terms for the next five years, no problem. Project three, an investment of 4.5 million in new tickets. Net savings of 1.2 million is expected in current terms, current money terms growing at 3.6% due to inflation during the five years life of the machines. Of course, cost of capital is 12%. Advise the company on the projects to invest. Now, one thing we need to appreciate is that the funds available is only 8 million and the projects that we need to decide are three. Project A requires 3 million, project two requires 4.5, and project three requires 4.5. So if I take 3 million plus 4.5 plus 4.5, that one takes us to 12 million. But available funds, available funds is only 8 million. So this, month, this means there is a limitation, there's a rationing. There is a rationing of 4 million. And this, of, uh, this automatically makes us conclude that this is a topic on capital rationing. And because it's a topic on capital rationing, the first thing, we need to rank the projects using the profitability index. We rank the projects using profitability index. So in answering such kind of a question, very important, we rank the projects using profitability index. And we know that profitability index, profitability index equals to present value of cash inflows we divide by the initial outlay that is our profitability index so after knowing the formula it's upon you to look for the variables in the formula very important so we can have we can have the three projects here i can put it this way we have the year I can put here the discounting factor, PVIF. I have the project A, project, project one, project two, and project three. The figures are in thousands of shillings. The cost of capital, if we can recall, is 12%. So I have projects year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. Project one has a cash flows of 850 in year one. 
Year 2 is 900. Year 3 is 950. Year 4 is 1000. And year 5 is 950. Project 2, uh, it expects to generate cash flows of 1408 annually. So you can do 1408, 1408, 1408, 1408, 1408, 1408, 1408, 1408, and 1408. Then this other project is a little bit unique. The 1.2 million that is expected is in current money terms. Current is January. Inflation does not wait. Inflation starts hitting you immediately. For that reason, the, the 1. Point, the 1.2 million that we have here will have to increase by 3.6%, 0.36, by for whichever the number of duration, the number of years in question. Like now, the first one, the first year, we are having 1,200. We are having 1,200 growing at, uh, by 3.6%. So we have, uh, let me try to do 1,200 times. 1.0036 so you're having 1243.2 you can do 1243 the second one you increase it by 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 1.035 percent 036 percent that one gives us 1288 you increase it also by one by 3.6 percent 1.036 you get 1334 you increase it by 1.036, you get 13.82. And you also increase it by 1.036, you get 14.32. So you have your cash flows. Inflation does not wait. Cost of capital is 12%. So if you do, we look at the discounting tables, 12%, 12% one year. 12% one year for somebody who has the discounting tables. It is a lump sum because every year is independent of the other. So you're having 0 0.8929, then 0 0.7972. We're having 0 0.7118, 0 0.6355, and of course we are having 0 0.5674. So I can have the present value of cash inflows for each of the three projects, for each of the three projects. So the first project, I go very fast. I go very fast for the first project. That is a 850 times this one plus 900 times this plus this times this. I get my answer very, very fast. So I'm having 0 0.8929. Times 850 plus 0.7972 times 900 plus 0.7118 times 950 plus 0.6355 times 1000, then plus 0.5674 times 950. So this one I'm having, we see if there is a place we, we missed. So I'm having 3327. 3327. Then the other one you are having, uh, when you check in this other table, 12% five years. We can simply use the annuity table, 3.6048, 3.6048 times 14.08. So here we are having 50.76, 50, sorry, 50.76. Then finally on the other side, uh, 0 0.8929 times 1243 plus 0 0.7972 times 1288 plus 0 0.7118 times 1334 plus 0 0.63, 6, 
times 1382 times 1382 then plus 0.5674 times 1432 so this one gives us 4777 we put here our initial outlays initial outlay back to the question back to the question so the initial outlay of project one project one required 33 million this other project requires 4500 and this one is also 4500 can i get the pi the profitability index which equals the present value of cash inflows divided by initial outlay so for the first project for the last project, I divide the, this answer that I have by 4,500, I get 1.061062. Then I'm having 5076 divided by 4,500, 1.128. Then finally, 3,327 divided by 3,000, 1.109. Finally, I do some ranking. When I'm ranking using the profitability index, remember, the higher the PI, the better the project is. So under ranking, the first project I give priority is this one, so I rank it as number one. Number two, I believe, is this one, and this one is number three. Then finally, in answering part one of the question, we are asked about, we were asked about Advise the company on the project to invest the available funds and calculate the resultant NPV if the three projects are divisible. So number one, number one, the projects are divisible. If the projects are divisible. So we have eight million to invest, but the projects available are not uh, the the amount that they require is not sufficient is not a, is not enough the amount available is not enough to cover all the all the funds that the projects require so i look at the project i look at the initial outlay and they want me to get the npv the net present value now the first project i give priority is project 2 out of the two mil out of the eight million available, project two requires four thousand five hundred to undertake. I'll be left with three thousand three point five million to invest. Out of the three point five million available, my second best project is project one, which needs three million. So I can get the three million out of the three point five million available. So I go to project two, project one, sorry, and the project one will take the three million. And because these projects are divisible, I've invested 7.5 million, I still have some 500,000 left with me. Because this, the projects can be scaled down, meaning I can partially undertake them, I go to my third project, project number three, although it requires 4.5 million, but I cannot afford the 4.5 million, I can only afford the 500, so that I'm able to invest all the 8 million that was available. And of course, they wanted us to get the NPV. NPV is the present value of cash inflows minus initial outlay. Present value of cash inflows minus initial outlay. So for like the first project that I undertook, we are having 50, 5076 minus 4,500. 5076 minus 4,500, somebody. 5076 minus 4,500. 5076 minus 4,500, I'm having 576 as my NPV there. Project 1 required the 3327 3, minus 3,000, I'm saying 327. And Project 3, I need to find over, first of all find out what is the percentage of Project 3? What is the percentage of Project 3 undertaken? It require, I'm only able to invest 500 out of the 4,500 that it requires. 
So meaning in project three, uh, the 500 divided by 4,500, this one is 11.1%. So even it's NPV, I'll only enjoy up to the, up to the extent of, the, of my investment. So that is uh, 47,500. That is 40, uh, 47, 7, 7, sorry, 4, triple 7 minus 4, 5. That is 227. So I'm having 11%, 11.1%, 11.1% of 277. So that one times 0.111, 30 point seven so my resultant NPV plus three twenty seven plus five seventy six I'm having nine thirty three point seven that covers part one of that question and you get your seven marks now part two if none of the projects, or no project is divisible, if no project is divisible, I'll have my project, I'll have the initial outlay, and I'll have the NPV. So because Project, uh, obviously project two is the best, so I'll start with my project two, which requires 4,500, and the NPV is 576. I'll go to my next project, which is project one. Project one requires 3,000, which whose NPV is 327, and because, the, because I'm left with 500,000, and there's no project that can be partially undertaken, then I'll have some 500,000 not invested. So I have some spare capacity, spare revenue of 500,000. So therefore, I'll only be able to invest in 7.5 million with an NPV, with an NPV of how much? Of 903. With an NPV of 903. So this one is also our resultant NPV. And this one is our resultant NPV. And that is what was entailed in that question, which was tested to those candidates who sat for their CASNEP exams of advanced financial management last sitting of May 2021, question 1B. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for watching. And I welcome you to continue subscribing to our social media channels. For physical classes, we are located at Commonwealth House, Moy Avenue, fifth floor. Commonwealth House, Moy Avenue, 5th floor. Our classes are on for both CASNEB, NEC, Hospitality, ICT, Foreign Languages. We are all registering the new students and the ongoing students. Thank you very much and feel welcomed.